It is one of life's biggest mysteries. Are we alone? Yes, in this month's Big Idea, Arthur Chien takes a closer look at how scientists are searching for proof of alien life. I think this is one of the most exciting scientific questions to address at the moment. Practically since humankind could look up at the sky, the question has been asked, do we have company out there in the cosmos? I'm quite sure that we're not the only intelligent species in the universe. We'll let Dr. Seth Shostak finish that thought in a minute. For the last 25 years, he and his team at the SETI Institute have been eavesdropping on space with their massive antennas in California, listening for signs of intelligent life, whether it exists or existed. I find it hard to believe that it hasn't, doesn't, or won't. And this is Dr. Rebecca Oppenheimer, chairwoman of astrophysics at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. She and her team have been looking at images of planets for the same. Both Oppenheimer and Shostak agree life must exist beyond Earth. In its simple form, it could be as close as Mars or Europa, Jupiter's icy moon. I have this dream that someday we'll send a probe out there and drill a hole through the ice Turn on the camera and there's a fish looking back. <laughs> Lift off of the Delta II rocket with Kepler. In the past decade alone, major breakthroughs in what we know about space have come through missions like the Kepler telescope, discovering countless planets in our galaxy so dense that anywhere you see a star, there are likely planets revolving around it, just like our system. The Milky Way galaxy in which we live, it has a couple of hundred billion stars. One in five of them might have a planet which has liquid oceans, some atmosphere, in other words, the conditions on which life could occur. The probability of planets capable of fostering life shot up dramatically with the Kepler's discovery. For instance, finding 452b, also being called Earth 2.0. People are calling it an Earth twin because it's an Earth-sized planet. Um, it's technically a bit larger than Earth, but it does have a similar temperature and it orbits a star similar to ours. I think that all those discoveries, and there are many of them that have come from Kepler and will continue to come from K2, of small rocky planets orbiting stars like our sun, many of those have the possibility of being rocky, of having uh, liquid water on their surface, and any of those could be something we could call Earth too. When talking about life in outer space, whether it's out in the great beyond or on another planet, it's tempting to feel like a dreamer. So here's something for the realists in us. Scientists tell us it's not that difficult for life to get started. You just need some basic ingredients, a little oxygen, some water, and nature seems to take its course. That's what happened on Earth, and rather immediately, according to scientists. If you look at the history of this planet, the moment life could be here, it was. And if basic life life starts easily, would it be just a matter of time before single cell organisms mesh together and start evolving into more complex life forms? Oppenheimer's fish, for instance. Even if there is a 1% chance, given the numbers, you see why experts believe intelligent life exists out there. I'm quite sure that we're not the only intelligent species in the universe, because if that were the case, given the number of stars, the number of planets, the number of planets that could host life, that would make what's happening here on Earth some sort of miracle. And uh, for scientists, that's not usually a very good explanation for things. So why haven't we had contact yet? Maybe it's because we just started looking. Shostak has been at it for 25 years, but in a timeline of Earth, four and a half billion years, we're starting kind of late. Not to mention, we'd be counting on life on other planets to have developed the tools at exactly the same time to look for us. And they may be even too smart for us. If there have been other civilizations um, within our galaxy, say even nearby, um, they may have already gone through a stage of evolution where they would see us as we see bacteria. Many astronomers believe the answers are not light years away. This is the first generation that actually has enough scientific knowledge and enough technology to, uh, to actually find something. So uh, either, either we find it before you die or you get a cup of coffee from me. And since I don't drink coffee, those scientists better get back to work. Arthur Chien, Fox 5 News.